नमस्ते हेलो एवरी वन आई होप यू आर एन्जॉइंग माई कोर्स ऑन रोल ऑफ क्राफ्ट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर एंड यू फाइंड इट बेनिफिशियल सो टूडे विल सी मॉड्यूल फोर मॉड्यूल फोर इज अबाउट इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर एंड क्राफ्ट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एक्सप्लोरिंग एप्लीकेशंस नाउ द ओवरऑल कंटेंट्स ऑफ टूडेज डिस्कशन द एप्लीकेशंस ओवरव्यू एंड द रेफरेंसेज दैट आर गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस नाउ we have already discussed a few explorations and applications in the previous modules uh, we'll go further ahead with some very interesting and creative ones this is my favorite example it is on the wood turning and lacquer craft of dholka dholka is a place in ahmedabad now this is about a workshop that is uh, uh, that was organized by dicrc sept uh, university it is one of my very uh, favorite workshops i was a part of the organizing committee and uh, this is a perfect example which talks about role of craft and technology in interior architecture so when we say wood turning craft it means like there is wood that turns there is a lathe machine on which the wood turns and then the section of wood is inserted between the pegs of the lathe machine and when we put chisel against the wood section there are some proportions and some interesting sections that are carved out of it so if we see over here this is the wood turning machine these are the pegs and this is the section of wood which is inserted and the chisels are kept against the turning wood as the wood revolves there are different kind of sections that are produced now there is a community over here in dholka that practices this craft and after wood turning the application of lacquer is also there which is usually done by women here we see anil ji he is the uh, principal craft person the master craft person here he is very innovative very open minded and very contemporary so we did this workshop uh, with anil ji and we came up with very interesting explorations this was done by uh, the uh, craft persons as well as the students of sept university plus the staff of dicrc where i was also working so these uh, craft persons and the community who is practicing this craft they uh, initially made very small sections you know small uh, toys small wooden sections maybe utensils some accessories but the challenge and the innovation that we adopted here was to go a little ahead and to come up with some prototype which is very contemporary in, in exploration in expression yet it had its roots in the traditional know how and the skills that the craft persons already possess so if i can show you the next slide uh, here so this is the traditional prototype that this community has been making this is called ghodiyu it's a baby cradle from here what we explored was something like this so this prototype is used as a partition screen in this center as we can see it is placed inside the center and this itself is a visual directory we can see all possible sections different uh, cross sections different lengths what the lathe machine could accommodate and this kind of prototype could be assembled keeping the base this one same as an adaptation from the traditional uh, baby cradle so it has lot of stability there is interesting joinery over here without much adhesive and we could explore sections from as small as 1 inches to Uh, like almost seven feet. So this was a very interesting prototype. Plus, it was also further explored. What if we do not have enough timber? Then we do some explorations in bamboo using different uh, joinery. So this was a very interesting uh, exploration, where the craft and technology, the uh, skill of the craft person, their uh, knowledge of the material and know-how, that can be extended and incorporated. within the built environment to create a furniture piece like here partition screen uh, or it could be something related to the built form also so there are several examples next if we see another application uh, we can uh, talk about the katkuni architecture of himachal pradesh uh, this reference has been taken from the book matra which is authored by mr jay thakkar it is co-authored by him with another author sky morrison so we see this very interesting image over here there are these alternative bands stone and then there is timber so this was in response to the climate and the earthquakes that the uh, region of himachal pradesh faced 
and this kind of construction came from the uh, traditional knowledge systems it is practiced by the indigenous communities and when there are lateral forces in case of earthquake this kind of construction where we have the alternate bands it prevents the entire building from shaking and falling apart so this comes from uh, natural resources the know how of the people the uh, in the form of climate responsiveness uh, in the region where these kind of structures are situated so these are very uh, interesting examples which we can uh, take from our traditional practices and we can incorporate even in contemporary times with necessary modifications uh, that are required or that are uh, resulting out of the uh, changes and the uh, needs that are changing with the time similar example is also found uh, in uttarakhand that is called koti banal architecture now this is one drawing it's an elevation it's a house in a village called malhari in the chamoli district here also if we see we see this construction so there are alternate bands there is stone masonry then there is timber beam and this timber beam is very akin to the contemporary rcc beam frame structure which reinforces the stone masonry wall so this is uh, taken from uh, indigenous communities and traditional know how and we still find these examples in uttarakhand which have stood the test of times and there are houses which are 300 years old 500 years old maybe in some cases beyond that here we also see this ladder so this is a timber ladder this is made from the uh, pine trunk which is local parlance is cheer and this is sculpted by hands only like in a single log of wood it is sculpted or scooped out of hands and this is used for navigating and negotiating between levels uh, levels so this is another kind of example where we see the traditional know how and the indigenous communities the role of craft and technology in creating interior architecture this is now uh, one picture which shows the interiors of the same house so we see different space making elements we see this timber roof we see the wall which is plastered with the local soil which is called the khar soil it has excellent binding properties then we have this uh, floor which is finished with thick layer of mud which is mixed with cow dung and uh, in local parlance this is called lipan so this also comes from indigenous communities and it has lot of scientific reasons we have this cooking hearth over here so this is the interior space which is again created with the role of craft and the indigenous skills and the traditional knowledge systems some examples of timber furniture also uh, we see in uttarakhand uh, this is just one image there is an extensive range maybe in one of the coming modules we'll go through them this is another very interesting example that i would like to focus on this talks about the ringal craft of uttarakhand now ringal is a variety of bamboo it is also called as dwarf bamboo because it's smaller in size the sections of bamboo are uh, smaller in size comparatively and it has different names it has different species so there is dev ringal there is gold ringal and so on so this ringal was earlier used to make mats and baskets just like we do with bamboo and uh, this this piece here if you see this is called moshta so this is again a sort of a mat which is placed on the floor and in the local parlance it is called moshta Uh, this has excellent damp proofing qualities and now if we see the applications here this is one of the uh, internet cafes in one of the resorts mohan retreat which is there in almora so we see the application here on the walls here this is another building uttarakhand seva nidhi where it is used uh, in the same way for flooring here we see the partition screens in the same cafe where this is used over here so we are seeing the different applications uh, the technique is same the skills are same but there are different explorations there are different applications rather than being just used on the floor it is also getting used at different uh, places as different space making elements so uh, like i was saying that it has excellent damp proofing qualities so we know that wherever there is lot of dampness ringal can be used on the walls on the flooring and so on these are some another examples which are uh, at the product level so here we see a very interesting uh, lamp over here we can make lot of lighting fixtures out of it and there is a different mood and a very nice ambiance which is created here we see the storage unit so there are drawers this is also made out of ringal 
So, the uh, entire discussion is about how these craft skills can be uh, explored further with the play of technology and we can integrate them, incorporate them into space making, we can create interior architecture out of it because essentially craft is all about materials and built forms and interior architecture also predominantly is about materials and the making. So, there is a very interesting uh, relationship between the two. Now, this is a uh, very nice uh, picture over here that we see, it is a painting which is done by uh, Dr. Matpal and uh, I have procured it from the collection of Folk Culture Museum which is there in Bhimtal uh, in Uttarakhand. So, this shows us the uh, women of Uttarakhand who are making an apron painting. So, apron paintings are the ritualistic floor paintings and they have been done since a very long time in Uttarakhand and they are done in different parts of India and we know them with different names. So, uh, this is uh, a narrative of the ethos, the society, the belief systems, the cultural practices of the communities. But the interesting point is that how this art could be explored as a surface finish and other uh, important adaptations in textile industry also. So, um, the current paint industries, especially the Asian paints, if we see the uh, range of their products, there are a lot of motifs and uh, surface finishes that they design. So, uh, there are also explorations with apen artists, uh, where they try to incorporate interesting motifs as surface finish. Uh, but what we need to check over here is that we do not exactly contemporize it. Uh, we should just uh, try to keep the essence and we should try to keep the originality. And that way the marriage of technology and tradition, it can result in a better continuity where everybody has a role to play. So, if we see this particular example, this is where the original motifs of uh, apron, they have been adapted and they are applied on fabrics through different techniques like applique. So, here we see certain motifs that have been identified and then they are applied on these uh, bags and apparels and there is this direct application through adaptation, through different expressions. That is another way of continuity and taking this craft to another domain. Uh, I would like to now play uh, a small video and um, this uh, video shows the terminal T2 Mumbai. Uh, we all know it is a very famous uh, airport which has been awarded several times. The construction is done by GVK group. Now, uh, the concept you know uh, before designing the airport was to create a mini India. Since uh, Mumbai is the financial capital, it is known for Bollywood and a um, lot of travellers and tourists, they come to India for visiting Mumbai and through Mumbai, they go to different places. So, the entire idea was that they get uh, the glimpse of entire India at the airport itself. So, different art and craft forms of India, the culture of India, some uh, built forms, interesting jali patterns, all of them have been tried to, uh, they have been recreated at the airport to give a glimpse of the mini India, so that one just knows, okay, this is India, we enter Mumbai and we have this nice place, airport, where we get to see everything about India, no matter if we do not uh, have time to visit all the places as, as a tourist. So, that is very interesting and as the video runs, please also notice the construction details and the materials. So, uh, let us just uh, see this small video for a while. All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night, in the recesses of their minds, wake in the day to find that it was just an illusion. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous, for they act on their dreams with open eyes and make them possible. This is the story of a dream that became real. We at the GBK believe whatever we are building in an infrastructure, we are building the nation. When we got in the competitive bidding, the Mumbai International Airport, it was felt that this is the most difficult project to conceive. This terminal is the greatest example a Indian company can achieve such standards 
and we can compare ourselves in any part of the world. All these iconic structures, they are permanent forever for the people of Maharashtra and city of Mumbai. That's why I take the pride to say our dream is to build the nation. It was a challenging dream indeed. Few realize that the Mumbai airport is one of the most constrained airports in the world. Situated in the heart of a bustling metropolis, it severely lacks one key element of every major airport, land. Our task was daunting. We had to create a whole new mega structure, even as we rebuilt runways, taxiways and aprons. And all this had to be accomplished, ensuring minimal interference to passengers. Never before had a project of this complexity been attempted. The Mumbai airport bears the name of a legend, Chhatrapati Shivaji. While it was an honor to take the legacy of the iconic leader forward, it was also a great responsibility. We were no longer seeking inspiration from global benchmarks. We were going to create our own. Experience said it was impossible, and reason said it was reckless. Yet, we chose to dream. After all, we were in Mumbai, the city of dreams. A city that has always placed on its highest pedestal the will to seek the impossible. And so, our dream took shape. It was ambitious and grand by any stretch of imagination. But it had to be. For it was a dream inspired by the spirit of India. An India that stands at the crossroads of time, reveling in the promise of the future and yet rooted in tradition. We imagined not just an airport, but an architectural feat that would give voice to the aspirations of a nation. The airport had to do more than just inspire awe. It had to make a quiet but compelling statement. I always had this burning desire to showcase to the world something which is very close to my heart, the beauty of Indian art and design. When GVK won the Mumbai airport bid, I had the opportunity to realize this dream. However, it was quite a struggle because there was no benchmark to follow anywhere in the world. I started off with the idea of using the peacock feather as the T2 design inspiration. and art from across the length and breadth of the country as its jewellery. Even though Mumbai Airport had huge constraints, we reached for the stars with a vision to make Mumbai Airport one of the best in the world, which will make Mumbai proud. This was not just any other project for us. This was truly a labor of love. It is an emotion that will be shared and experienced by every visitor to the new terminal. While the emotion is articulated in many ways, none is as novel as JRA, a unique initiative that celebrates the diversity of Indian art. Like our anthem, JRA eulogizes the essence of India through her art and culture. Showcasing treasures sourced from across the country, JRA is one of the world's largest art programs in the public realm. In the timeless art of India, the modern design of the new integrated terminal T2 finds its soul. T2 at Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport heralds a new era for Mumbai. As a catalyst of change, it will inspire other developments and allow us all to believe that in our greatest challenge, we find our greatest opportunity. With great humility and pride, GVK presents its dream to the city of dreams. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like the video mentioned that this terminal showcases the timeless Indian art and design and we see a lot of beauty involved in it. So as an interior architect, as, an, as a designer, I take immense pride and I really like this building. So therefore I put it here and also showed you this video uh, which will give a lot of idea about the different uh, materials used, what is the concept, different art forms incorporated. There are some images also here. So uh, this is the inspiration from the peacock feather that was being mentioned in the video and how it has been uh, utilized as structural part. So we see the column and the superstructure and it is not just a surface but uh, from nature an inspiration has been taken and we have integrated it within the structure and we have created a build form out of it. Here we see these lightings. These are uh, inspired from the lotus and there is a certain adaptation and modification. They have a very contemporary expression, but still uh, it talks about Indian roots and motifs and value systems. Here we saw this in the video also. This is the compilation of different uh, jalis from uh, India and it talks about the crafts and skills and uh, it represents India in a nutshell. This is an example of Gond art which is a very popular art form in India and it is a very expressive form and it is painstakingly done by the artisans and the craft persons that is also reflected in the terminal T2. Now since I was mentioning that Mumbai is about Bollywood, Bollywood lot of people know about it even outside India they enjoy it. So we see these panels, we see Mr. Bachchan over here and all the legends which are there along the uh, escalators and the walking tracks. So that is also an art piece here. This is a very interesting uh, lounge area which has this uh, adaptation from Jali. It has very interesting motifs and detailing, very aesthetic and pleasing to eyes. So this is again role of craft and technology in how we are creating the interior architecture. So after seeing all these creative interesting uh, applications and examples, we will just see the overview of what all we went through today. So we saw certain applications uh, of craft and technology and interior architecture and we saw those applications at three levels. We saw it in built form where we touched upon the structure as well as the surface. Uh, we saw the applications in furniture making and then we also saw certain products. Like always, I would like to end with this uh, enlightening quote, the discipline of creation, be it to paint, compose, write, is an effort towards wholeness. Now next module, we'll discuss the summary and we'll have a discourse on what all we discussed so far. And before signing off, let's just have a look at the references that I have prepared for all of us. Thank you.